it is the system that is the foundation for conscious experience. It also determines personality and a big part of this behavior. The endocrine and nervous system are both the primary modes of communication for the body. The nervous system, since it's nerve to target, it's very precise. It's not system wide. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Most of them we've already discussed. The primary way of communicating nerve to target or nerve to another nerve is through neurotransmitters. And we've introduced, I think, four of them. We'll talk a little bit about the electrical and chemical message and how it's transmitted from one cell to another cell. The three basic steps. So an overview of the nervous system. So we have sensory organs that receive information. And then we have transmission of that information to the spinal cord and brain. The brain processes the information, integrates it, and then sends commands to the muscles or stores information. Commands can be voluntary or they can be involuntary. The response can be to a muscle, it can be to nerves, or it can be to glands. We have major glands like we think about the endocrine glands, but then we have smaller glands. We have sebaceous glands within our skin. We have sweat glands. The primary subdivision of the central nervous system, this is our working model, and we will refer back to it time and time again. We have already discussed the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, and, we've talked, and we will talk about it again in other systems, and we'll talk about it again in pharmacology and pathology. So this is the, the major subdivisions that we need to be comfortable with, what the stimulator is, what the activator is, the neurotransmitter, and the end organ. The primary division of the nervous system is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system can be pretty easily defined by the brain and the spinal cord. There's really only two components in the central nervous system, so it makes it easy. And then how do we define the peripheral nervous system? Well, it's everything else. So everything except the brain and spinal cord. So here you see it, the system in its entirety. You see the brain, the spinal cord, that's the central nervous system. And then all of these other nerves that you see, larger nerves and many smaller billions, millions and billions of smaller nerves that you do not see. Ganglia are cell bodies outside of the central nervous system. So now that we have this separation between central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, we'll now define the peripheral nervous system in much greater detail. But it's nice to know that the central nervous system is just the brain and the spinal cord. Well, the peripheral nervous system has two major divisions. And that division is that the peripheral nervous system is divided into the sensory and motor division. Now, take a minute to think about what those two words mean. Sensory, if I were to, to ask you, or even to ask a layperson, non-medical, what do we mean by sensory? It's detection of our environment, stimuli in our environment. So that is what we mean by sensory. The other term that we use for sensory is afferent. I'm just gonna say that up front because it's a term that we will use interchangeably as we get deeper into the discussion, but you should be familiar with this terminology. It's another word for sensory. So sensory is how you detect your environment, whether something's hard or soft or smells good or smells bad or uh, is light or heavy, seeing is a special sense, hearing, temperature, heat versus cold, these are all afferent sensory stimuli. The motor division, motor division is then the opposite of that, opposite in the sense that the information is going away from the central nervous system and out to the body. So the word for, that we use for motor, in other words, another word for motor is efferent. And if you think about the word efferent, starts with E, like the word exit, information is leaving the central nervous system. So now we can divide the motor division into two components. The first is visceral and the other is somatic. So the motor division is divided into the visceral motor division and the somatic motor division. So let's take a moment and think about what visceral means. Visceral refers to internal organs. Somatic refers to skeletal muscles. 
Now these two terms do not mean the same. It's not it's not equivalent to sensory and afferent and motor and efferent, but in terms of learning what the difference between what the motor division does, the visceral versus somatic, you need to make that association. So if if I want to if I want to move my hand to write with a pencil, that's the motor division somatic. So it's outgoing stimuli to the muscles of my hand, and that's somatic motor. On the other hand, if I smell hamburgers cooking in the kitchen, then the response is now I'm going to start secreting gastric juices in response to the cephalic response, and my the stomach muscles are going to start churning, and I'm getting ready to eat. That is a visceral response. I have no control of it at all, other than I smell the food, the odor of the food stimulated that division, the visceral motor division. And so the motor is my stomach churning, starting to slowly prepare for a meal. That's a visceral motor division. Notice it's automatic. So the visceral motor division, this automatic response, can either be an increase or it can decrease. So the sympathetic nervous system is flight or fight. And the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest or rest and relax. You start to see a little bit of complexity out of the peripheral nervous system. Now we'll go ahead and pick up the sensory division. So the sensory division has two parts. We have a visceral sensory division and we have a somatic sensory division. I want to say a little bit about the morphology of the peripheral nervous system. So this is the soma okay, or the cell body. This is the axon. And here we have the nerve terminal. Nerve terminal. And here is where we secrete the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters come out this end of them. So here I've only drawn one neuron, but if I were to draw a ganglia, I might draw a ganglia as something that I can see grossly during my dissection. That might look like this next to the spinal cord, and it might have many, many cell bodies making up the ganglia. And the axons would leave the cell body through this cord. But this cell body is this, so this is a ganglia. And this is a neuron. The endoplasmic reticulum in neurons is prolific. There is more endoplasmic reticulum in these cells because they're very productive, making proteins and neurotransmitters. And so they have a rich, their, their cell body has a lot of endoplasmic reticulum. And so when you look at a neuron under the microscope, you will see this endoplasmic reticulum. And we refer to this endoplasmic reticulum in nerve cells as missile substance. If you like this lesson, please subscribe and click notification.